Guys, it is June 1st and I have yet to do a garden video this season as of yet. So I'm going to attempt to do it now before I get too lazy and too busy or too busy. So here we go. I'm going to start with the front of the house. <clears throat> All right. So if you guys have been following for some time now, you know that I've got a blackberry patch on the front of the house okay so there's two l-shaped garden beds one there and one here and then there is a circle patch in the middle and then there's the front porch side orchard and on the other side is more stuff growing so we've got Blackberries here and there is going to be an abundance of blackberries on each one of these bushes Okay, and then that one has created another plant and it is coming up out of the ground. We have <clears throat> Comfrey growing right next to this granny Smith apple tree, which if you looked at any of the videos last year I had thought this tree was dead and it was literally cut down and this is the distance from the ground all this is this year's growth and largely in part to the comfrey planted right in the same hole with it so i had planted a patch of comfrey right here in this patch here and it is growing wild and if you can see this blackberry plant right next to it has exploded in growth exploded and there's a lot a lot of blackberries on this plant a lot okay so we've got another blackberry here and then in this circle patch we've got a rose bush rosemary some weeds growing in there what my grandmother would call a lift forever because they don't ever die um another thing of rosemary we've got blueberries right here a little blueberry bush and then i've got a cherry bush here and a cherry bush there then sage on the other side as ground cover on this other l shape it's flanked with blackberries on either side so this is on the inside of the l blackberry blackberry it's a mulberry plant right here but you can see it's coming back from the root and then I've got comfrey planted right next to it this one seems to die back every winter um, so I may consider moving it to an area where it doesn't get as much cold and wind in the winter time <clears throat> and then follow that with blackberry and blackberry so here is where my elderberries are going wild and I did not trim them last year so that's why they are growing as wild as they are growing but I will cut that bad boy back down pretty much to the ground in the fall so in here we've got strawberry galore <laughs> so all down here is all strawberries interplanted with blueberries <sighs> there's a tree collard here that is going to seed and I'm going to let it seed although they say it doesn't the seed is not true to the plant um, I'm just gonna see what happens there's just a hedge back there <clears throat> that's just a hedge that's kind of a little wild and I've got my lovely echinacea look how pretty that is so I've got a few echinacea plants here. There's one here. Um, and there should be another one over there, but I don't see that one coming up. And then there's some weeds in here that I gotta take care of. But for the most part, it is strawberry galore that I have got to thin out. Then here's my mint patch that I've gotta harvest and dry out some mint. And I'm not sure how much of this you can catch with the light. But this here is all rosemary, lavender, 
sage, thyme, more thyme, <laughs> oregano, more thyme. So I think I'm going to get another thing of lavender here because I got a lavender plant towards the back that's in a spot not getting enough sun. So I think I'm going to just do lavender all on this side. Get a nice little edge border of lavender. There's a <clears throat> Rosa Sharon in here that just does not want to die, but that is what it is. And then if we walk over to this side of the house, this is where we have sort of the orchard set up. So this was a Mutsu apple tree that was about the size of that tree, but it looked like it was dying on me. Um, it looked like it was dealing with a lot of blight last year. So I literally cut it down and you can see where I cut it down to. And all of this is this year's growth. And so far, so good. It's looking healthy. I haven't sprayed it with anything. I need to get to it, but I haven't. And here is my beautiful roses. Look how pretty those are. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Little rose bush. I'm probably gonna put the other one that got pulled out right here because I've got a fence being installed. Here's a pear tree. And yes, we do have some pears on the tree as well. And this is two plum trees. And you can kind of see how the it goes down. So from this pear tree, we've got an Asian pear tree and then a peach tree. Then on this side is where my grapevines were doing really, really well last year until we had one really bad windstorm and they all toppled. So I, I literally cut it all down and then I've just got to create a new structure for it. And then I will have watermelon growing in front of it. So here's that peach tree again. It's another Asian pear tree. And as you can see, the new addition is a fence in the making. So here's the other Asian pear tree. This is a cherry tree in a pot. So y'all still cannot tell me you can't grow. Look how tall that thing is in a pot, 17 gallon pot. No excuses, grow even if you can only grow in a pot. So this area has gotten revamped a little bit. I've got two raised beds in here where that was not there last year, but you still see my raspberry bush going around. I was de-weeding. There is a rose plant that I've got to replant that came out to make room for this fence here. So here's the other Asian pear, my lovely nectarine tree that is my arch nemesis that I still have to baby a little bit but this bad boy is going to be cut down to probably here soon peach tree peach tree and there's an apple tree Brooklyn I don't even know how you got back out but you need to get back in that house my dog has made her way in the backyard don't look at me all side-eyed go inside all right, so in between, un well, underneath the nectarine, I've got a row of fever few. And I've got hibiscus popping up, which I think I might move to give it a little bit more light. I've got kale around the, get over here, Brooklyn, around the base of the nectarine. Oh, this dog. Uh 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 uh, -uh. no, ma'am. Brooklyn, move. I've got apple mint lemongrass and all those lovely tall stalks down there are um, asparagus the kale is going to seed so there is a kale patch in here amongst some weeds going to seed then in this row here i've got peppers um collard greens well big daddy collard greens that are also going to seed so i'm gonna let them go to seed because this is how you can re replenish your own seed stock without having to buy every single year then here I've got celery, which looks like some of my celery is also going to seed. That is okay. There's the apple tree. Then I've got a beet plant that went to seed because this was beets from last year that I left in the ground. And then here in my shadow along the red fence, I've got basil on one side and then I've got tomatoes on the other side, but I've chopped and dropped some of the artichoke leeks that's blocking the pathway. But 
we do have artichokes growing for the first time this year I've got a head of artichokes so I am excited to see what the actual head looks like when they open they say that pollinators love them and then here's another view of the asparagus so I will put some stakes in the ground on the edges of them to get them to stand straight up they fern at this time of the year and that's how they get their their reboot and charge to grow some more next year here I have Thai basil tomato and I've got some more basil tomato this is another peach tree and this peach tree has been giving me problem year after year after year but this year it is not nearly as bad I've done some extreme pruning and opened up that center a lot then I have put some apple mint on the bottom to deter a lot of pests that don't like the smell of mint all right so I've got sweet potatoes over here let me move out of the way so here's on the other side where that apple mint is I'm gonna sit for a second and then I've got comfrey growing out in this back corner I've got lemon balm right there I've got chamomile chamomile tomato and Thai basil if my dog didn't kill it all and I only see one of the dill plants I'm gonna have to get another one she probably definitely scratched it out fussing with this dog over here is two cucumbers which I may very well move cucumber cucumber dill I may move this put it on the side of the house and then I may put my um, prickly pear back here so that way she won't keep fighting with this dog back here along this fence line and if she does she'll get pricked and then she'll start to think twice then I've created a little seating arrangement back here to kind of hide away from the kids when they irk my soul because any parents out here you know as much as you love your children they do irk your soul and look how this I can hide they can't see me <laughs> this, the chair is literally in between these three chairs I mean three trees and at night it lights up it has lights next to them so this is an apple tree and underneath it, underneath it I have pineapple mint and then I'm also going to get some comfrey in there as well this one is another peach tree <clears throat> And underneath that one I have strawberry mint and then on the other side of it I have thyme and then this is the other side of the artichokes and then here are the um, sweet potatoes so do need to trim a little bit of these trees to get a little bit more light in here but it's not bad then over here these are came back from last year and then I've created a patch where all a bulk, the bulk of my echinacea is. And then we're just gonna have this as an echinacea patch. And you see some of them are starting to flower. They're pretty. <clears throat> so here is my cold hardy orange tree. And <clears throat> it has been fruiting oranges, which is nice. I've created this little section here, and this is going to be a mixture of potatoes. This here is a pear tree that I need to trim. <clears throat> here is some white buckwheat. Now, I did identify those two from my previous video as borage. So, got a lot of wood chips dropped. I'm going to do a lot of watermelon over here, I think, because it's a nice, a nice amount of sun and it can run nicely, especially right in front of the beehives. So, though I'm not getting close for you to see them go in and out. But yeah, that's the bees. And I am due for an inspection on those bad boys. I'll get to it either sometime this weekend. So here's some more raised garden beds that I'm slowly starting to fill up as I'm not filling all this up with soil. But this is the project that I'm still working on, which is getting control of these weeds. So here we've got an apple tree, a red delicious apple tree. 
here what is a pear tree that was almost to the top of those but I have cut down and opened up one to let more light in and two to control the growth and this one also gets a lot of rust damage um, so to kind of control it so when I go to spray my fish and kelp solution it can absorb better this is another pear tree same thing this was all the way up there and you can kind of see like the length of this branch here how long some of those branches were they were so long that I chopped them and dropped them all along the bottom of that fence line so yeah a lot plus I'm still trying to make sure we can create create walkways in between the trees but this ongoing project still waiting for babe to get the stuff out the car and some more boxes so I can finish laying down the cardboard and wood chips so another pear tree, and then this is my cherry tree. I have another ch cherry tree over here. And this dog is still yet to go inside this house, I told you to. Then we've got sunflowers over here. Brooklyn move, door, door, sunflowers. And then I'm gonna mix corn in here as well once I finally get down to this side. So this section here is all spanking brand new along with a lot on that side of the house as well. So we took out the old chicken area. So there was two falling apart chicken coops that were back here and it didn't have any cover like this has cover. It was just like coops like what you see inside that one over there, but bigger obviously. And there were two of them but when I would let the chickens out, when I would let the chickens out, they would often fly over and get all in my garden bed. And apparently some predator had realized that there was chickens back here. So I would always have issues maintaining my flock. So before I go into the chicken coop area here, I've gotten some tropical plants. So in this one here is a ponderosa pink lemon I've got a mango key lime mango no go back this is a pink variegated lemon so the inside of the lemon is like a blush pink ideally like the color of pink lemonade mango key lime mango this is the ponderosa lemon so ponderosa lemons are lemons that get to be the size of about a grapefruit one lemon about the size of a grapefruit and here is one that is growing and then we've got a lot a lot a lot a lot of buds in here that are forming into little lemons so I'm excited I got this in South Carolina and the other one down there when we went to South Carolina last weekend so here's my new flock of chickens some of you have seen when I hatched them out. And I've got a task for you guys. I keep hearing one in the morning, keep trying to find its voice. So apparently I've got a rooster or roosters amongst this flock. So before anybody even says, that black one right there is a female and that white one right there is a female. Then all the other ones were either hatched out Complements of eggs from Huck and Buck Farm, or they were purchased from Tractor Supply. So here's my thinking. That gray one right there, which was supposed to be a female that I purchased from Tractor Supply, and, and I say that gray one right there that just ducked down, just simply because of the way that one stands amongst the rest of them, Head and neck are thicker and wider. Feet are a lot bigger. And then there is a all black one in here as well that I feel may be a rooster as well. And it's also one of the ones that hatched out with the furry legs. And I know that one I got from Andrea. No, it's either, I think it's this one right here. But I'm not 100% sure. It's just the way that those two particular ones especially that gray one right there 
that gray one has this level of dominance and is always bothering the rest of them. And it just gives me rooster vibes. So, and I think the other one is this one here that may be a rooster. So Andrea, look at this one here with the fluffy feet. Fluffy legs. I think that one may be a rooster. So there's one or two in here that are trying to find its voice because it is what woke me up at six o'clock in the morning. And I don't need to have any roosters in here. So I don't need it irritating my neighbors. All right. So that is the chicken. But you can see they are fully undercover. So no aerial pressure. And they've got a good amount of space to roam around. As you see, I throw in here grass that they can scratch and do their good stuff. And if you just miss that one hopping, see if she does it again. To try to get to that plant above her head. There they go. <laughs> hopping to get the weeds so they've got a, a good amount of greens they crack me up though all right so on to the next addition to my lovely homestead slash pharmacy uh oh nope we're not going out that way let's try this again yeah even with this new build something realized that the chickens are still here because they dug a hole over here not too long ago so we've got that barricaded with mesh and bricks so they try to dig through that again they're going to hurt themselves so this is the other addition to the pharmacy we got quail guys quail and they're doing really really well so this is compliments to a lady named heather here in smyrna I tried to hatch out some that she gave me before and I did not have any success with that. So I just bought them. They were about 12 weeks old, 12, 13 weeks old. So <clears throat> there they go. And these are going to be cycled out for meat. I am trying to lock this up. Uh oh stay here for one second my goal is to not only produce majority of the food that my family consumes from my land my grounds but also the meat I'm getting there slowly but surely so I do have meat chickens that are coming soon but I can't have roosters in my development because they make a lot of noise and they can be very um disruptful to my neighbors but with the quail that you see back here mm -mm. I can have male quails and I can at that point raise my own meat continuously and cycle in cycle out so I can sell their eggs I can let them grow out and then harvest them or process them and there should be about the size of Cornish hens like the little little tiny Cornish hens that you get from the grocery store so they grow rest. I believe they cycle out similarly to um, rabbits where in a 90 day period they're pretty much full grown and ready to harvest or ready to process so in here let me go back in here for a second I'm actually also going to raise rabbits in here as well along with the quail so I'm thinking along this line here something here something here um, enough for two does and a buck um, at any given time and then cycle out the does to have babies alternate alternate having kids yeah so that's going to be the quail and rabbit hutch and then this area will be enclosed once i get it clean so you can see t post in the ground and there's t post over there as well don't mind this because i had to cut that down to make room for that we're going to give this a split rail look similar to the new fence that's going up here and then we're going this is the opening here it's about an eight foot opening and then we're going to create an archway well there will be a gate there and then create an archway or pergola to allow some passion fruit vines to grow there these are my compost bins you can't really see them right now because these are in the way this is a project in the making a lot of this is going to go as 
ground cover in the chicken coop and then i'm using a lot of this to fill my beds um chop and drop and so forth but there is actually compost back here going and my son constantly keeps adding to it and there's a lot of flies over here so this is another project area and this is the part that gets on my last nerves for the most part because this is where i tend to have and a lot of weed pressure so i do have a bed of potatoes a bed of potatoes a bed of garlic that i started in november i've got a rose bush back there and that lavender that i was telling you about is actually back here amongst the weeds and you can't even see it but it is all right there amongst the weeds so i'm going to pull that from there and put it in the front where it get more light but here's the rose bush there's another rose bush hiding right here which i think i might move to and then another rose bush over there but yeah this back area needs to be cleaned up my garlic patch needs to be cleaned up and i need to feed it a lot of the grass weeds were you know stifling its growth so i've gotten a lot of the weeds out i still need to get more weeds out and then go from there so that is that patch there and then if you guys were watching as i did this you know my citrus lane is now done so i've got one two three four five six seven eight nine cold hardy citrus plants that range from kumquats grapefruits tangelos um mandarins and so forth and then i have brought my pots of pineapples and put them out here it's about time for them to come outside anyway so this area i don't know how much of it you can see with this lovely glare is there we go another project area heavy weed pressure so just to kind of show you that <clears throat> Air's not always, how do I say this? Um, you're not always going to have the most ideal situations when it comes to gardening. Oftentimes you're gonna have things that are gonna piss you off, that are gonna challenge you, that are going to rub you the wrong way and make you wanna quit. Trust and believe, because last year I got to a breaking point where I was just like, I can't do it anymore. And I've got a video in my feed to show that I was just like, I'm done. Because the amount of work that I put in and then for it to be overtaken with weeds, it really it really rubbed me the wrong way but step up to the challenge solve the problem because your your solutions are always within the means of what your problem is so i'm going to keep pushing forward this year as you see there's a lot that has progressed since then so on this side although this is my challenge this excites me because now i am fencing off my yard <laughs> This will be fixed. We're gonna have two more beds here and this is where I think I'm gonna bring the cucumber plants that I was telling you and then I'm gonna have the other hibiscus that I said I was gonna move over here as well. Gets more light over here, although there is still some shade, it does get a lot more light here than underneath those nectarine trees. So I've got a fig bush lane here. So I've got one fig tree, another fig tree, and another fig tree. Let me give you another angle because there's a lot of glare from the sun. So one fig tree, one fig tree and one fig tree and you can kind of see how i am opening that up to allow for more airflow i'm going to do the same for these two okay because there is a plant in there that's hiding that's actually one that i actually planted red vein sorrel which is a bitter green but it is really really good for blood flow so and then here's another view hopefully without my shadow of the citrus lane and then here when I had all the way down there by the water barrel is my blackberry plants. Yep, there we go. So here's the fence, guys. And this will all be cleaned up. This is actually the wood that's going to be used to make that um, fence area down there in front of the chicken coop. Mimic this fence here on those T posts down there using pallet wood. So, but here is where my hazelnuts are and my berry bushes. And yes, I know they're planted close together. And yes, I've heard that one's going to, sh you know, 
they're not going to have enough light or whatever but as you can see they are doing okay my blueberries this is what was in front of the house in the strawberry patch that i moved i've got gooseberry i've got currants i've got honey berries i've got comfrey i've got a lot there's a comfrey there i've got plenty 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 growing but i knew i was going to get the fence and i knew i was going to reorient this space anyway so come the fall a lot of this will be moved around and then this my sis got for me and i don't know if it is going to make it or not i thought i saw some growing from the root and this is the very reason like why i don't like growing pomegranate in a tree form i like growing them in a bush form you grow them in a bush form even if it dies back it will always shoot back up from the root if you grow it from the tree form it doesn't always do that because you have one main leader so this died back in the winter this died back in the winter i can literally cut these two off i can cut this off i can cut this off and there goes my new plant but you still see it coming in from the root i think i might actually move these one where they're not going to get as much um wind damage in the winter time so that's really a big part of the problem or i might although it's cold hardy to my zone it seems like it always seems to die back in the winter and then that way it stifles the plant and the plant has to regrow instead of just continuing to grow so here is that fence line that's where the gate's going to go and then there's going to be hard wire cloth on the inside to prevent chickies from going out dog from going out and then what i was thinking i would like to get a door here and then yes that would actually be perfect from there to here from there that post get another post here and then have another area here or if not here probably not here because that won't give her too too much space i may have to break up this bed yeah or come down a little further maybe come down a little further because i do want to put a greenhouse here so if i come down to where the greenhouse is going to be match this post here i think that's what i'm going to do from here to here to there close it off then my dog can have this whole space to run and then that way she's not bothering the animals back there and then i can leave this area here for my chickens and my rabbits to um kind of semi free range on the grass but they'll be in tractors so i have a chicken tractor in the garage and then i will be constructing a rabbit tractor for the grow out rabbits when i get them so yeah there's more projects to come like i said i want to have a greenhouse here a 10 by 16 and this area which will literally come out to about here down the length of the morning room there create <clears throat> some growing space there probably in a form of more raised garden beds and then just be able to enjoy the grass between the kids and the chickens it's kind of like what i'm looking at so although my vision is not all the way to fr fruition it is definitely definitely getting there it is getting there piece by piece by piece by piece by piece so we come all the way around this is to the other side of the house and then in the very front there i have a light like plant so now that also gives me ha 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 now that i've got the fence going I've got all this space here to create some loveliness so what i may actually do and yet the dog is still following me after I told her to go to the door and go in the house. So I may move those hazelnut bushes. Put one right here. One right here. And then behind the hazelnut, I may put the pomegranate to give it some wind protection. And then just redefine the beds. Create a little walkway on the back of the fence so that the guy can go in and cut the grass move things over 
line it up neatly some sort of like how I've lined up the citrus bed but yeah just keep this walkway and path open but then I can bring that all the way to the fence line and then I know I have all this room here in the front to work with as well so yeah the last the last of my mulch there but yeah that is what I've got going on so thank you guys if you got through this one of my longest videos here I appreciate you for watching it um this is my first official garden tour of the season there i'm a behind in a lot of things but i'm ahead in a lot of other things but regardless i'm just going to keep moving forward regardless of schedule you know so thank you for watching um if you liked what you've seen and you would like to see more definitely like subscribe and share to anybody else where this information can be useful um because a lot of people think that they cannot grow on a third of an acre i only have a third of an acre i'm in the middle of a development i make no excuses so i don't want to hear you guys making any excuses you can grow wherever you want however you want even if it's indoors i will have a section of how i'm growing indoors in my morning room once i get that set up going properly but I've got to get stuff cleared out of my morning room to clean up my morning room. But I'm focusing on outside for right now. So like, subscribe, share, and leave me some comments. Give me some feedback. And until next time, you guys have a great day. Enjoy your Saturday. And happy June 1st.